Right, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, let's get started. Um, so this afternoon we're going to have a uh, discussion panel rather than a talk to start with, with these five gentlemen. Uh, we've lost one of them, uh, the guy from one fun state, but uh, we'll do without him. Um, so how does it work? We, it's a discussion, so we need you to take part of it, and um, no one has prepared anything. So it's going to be very uh, raw. And they all come from different companies, so they might have very different point of views about code reviews. And um, yeah, so let's start with the presentation. We first have uh, Radek from Stuxnet. He works in Poland and uh, you're a senior developer, right? Yeah. Um, Michael Ford uh, from Canonical and um, maintainer of the Mock Library. Um, um, Daniel Pope, um, Bank of America, should I? Bank of America. And you've done a review board uh, project. Uh, yeah, well, so I... I, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, Vladimir Resinov from Google, where you are very passionate about uh, code reviews. And uh, Jonathan Lang, where I'm... Um, okay. Going to let you present them then. Right. Can you say that again? Oh, uh, hi, I'm Jonathan Lang. I'm from uh, Cluster HQ. Cluster HQ for the streaming. Um, right, so my first question was um, what tools do you use? Do you make them in house? Do you use open source projects or do you buy tools? It is allowed. It is allowed if you want. Okay. Is there? Can you say for the JavaScript talk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, because uh, uh, our project, we, it's all on, on GitHub. So I just want to see, like, who here actually uses does code reviews and uses GitHub for code reviews in the audience? Right. Cool. Okay. Just wanted to see that. That's what I asked for, GitHub for code reviews. Okay, I'll do yeah. GitHub for code reviews. Yeah, cheers. Um, uh, one last point, if, if you're from the audience and you want to ask a question, just uh, raise your hand and wait for the microphone, otherwise uh, you're not going to be heard. Okay. So we use GitHub? Good, so um, what tools do you use? <laughs> so I'm working on um, a project called Juju, which is um, a big GitHub repository, and we use Review Board for code reviews, uh, and we have um, we use the the GitHub Webhooks API, so that as soon as you create a pull request, a re corresponding review is created on uh, Review Board uh, and is uh, updated when the um, the pull request changes. I also worked for four years for a, for, uh, a company called Resolver Systems, where we did um, strict pair programming, and we didn't do code review on top of pair programming, and, and my experience and opinion is that code reviews are essential if you don't do pair programming, but they're a relatively poor substitute for pair programming. I can explain why later if you'd like. Uh, uh, so uh, at Bank of America, there is, um, we've written quite a lot of our own tooling, and uh, there is a system for code reviews which is more like a kind of, it's it, there is, uh, it will give you a diff and you can comment on it, but there isn't like very good support for um, like commenting on very fine grained sections of the, of the review. Um, so I wrote a tool that's very much inspired by review board that we used in, uh, in the team that I've, I've moved within the bank. Um, and that was very successful in improving code quality. Well, I'm afraid I cannot really say anything interesting because we use our own internal tool, which is very good, but it has some things that would not really make sense to like some other companies because it's very tightly integrated to our uh, testing infrastructure and continuous uh, integration and stuff like that. I think it inspired some of the open source tools. I don't remember the name of the tool, but there, there is, sorry? Reviewable.io. 
Possibly, yes. So, so there is an uh, open source tool which looks awfully similar to what we have in Google. And can sh of course, it's pure coincidence. It's probably written by ex-Googler. Uh, but I know other, other teams who do more open source stuff than I do. They use GitHub. And there is something else for Chrome project as well. And Rodek, what do you, what do you use at uh, Stuxnet? Uh, in, our, in my current project, uh, we are using uh, GitHub pull requests and comments to the to the diff. So that's nothing, uh, not a, a separate sophisticated system. Just uh, just just GitHub pull requests. Right and. Um, I was actually interested in knowing why pair programming is um, better than code reviews, but um, if, is there a more pressing question from the audience, maybe? Yes, there is one there. Um, yeah, uh, well, in my company, we're using Gerrit right now, and I wanna know if you can go a bit on on the difference between Gerrit and other tools, and what do you think it should be, uh, what are the best uh, options that those two have that you use compared to others? Also, uh, uh, what kind of uh, other uh, hooks or automate uh, system you use to check the code? Like not only for code review from another developer, but just automation uh, checkers. And also what is the important part, what is the policy that you use and what has been the most important policy that you, that helped you to do better code reviews and faster because in my opinion, the most important issue is uh, the, to share a common policy on how to do the code reviews and what to expect. That was a lot of questions. I think there was three questions. <laughs> um, so uh, the first part was what tools do you use and what are the benefits of them, the specific features, is that right? And then integration with the infrastructure and ecosystem around testing, and then about the shared knowledge of code reviews. So that's, so um, the shared knowledge is a particular aspect where pair programming wins a great deal over code reviews. One of the big things that code reviews provide is it's not just one person who's looked at this code, it's two people, um, but if you're, doing a code review of an aspect of the code you're not familiar with, having enough context to be able to really understand the code in detail. I mean, this is a common difficulty with code reviews, is reviewing code that you're not intimately familiar with can be very difficult, and which is why you tend to find, if you're working on tricky bits of the code, well, there's only a few people who are really qualified to review this, and then the knowledge doesn't actually get shared around a great deal, or you have someone who doesn't know the code at all who comes and does a review, and they can only do quite a superficial review, catch your typos, catch duplicated code, catch sort of, which things that are worth catching, but, but which re don't really address things like architectural and design decisions, that uh, are important or maybe notice things like race conditions with other parts of the code because they don't fully understand the semantics of the code you're touching. Uh, and certainly, um, the pair programming I've done, we used to rotate, you'd have somebody who owned a feature um, and then we'd re rotate the person that they were pairing with every day. So you would, uh, it's not, uh, so pair programming is a great tool for mentoring, for bringing people on board. It's great for collective code ownership and it's really much better than, uh, than code review for that purpose. The, the, another difficulty about code review is if you have this big amount of code that's landed and you, you kind of dislike the way it's been implemented, but it's already been done. So to go back and say, well, actually, look, um, it would be slightly better if you did the whole thing a different way. Nobody's going to go and rewrite their code for that. But whereas pair programming, where you've got more than one person involved in the design and the implementation of the code right from the start, you're much more likely to have those kind of discussions um, going on as the code is being done, rather than waiting till the end. Um, Jonathan so wants to add something. So um, that's what I. That, those are some of the benefits that I'd say pair programming offers over code review. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so just, uh, so I want to agree with Michael in that those are definitely benefits that pair programming can provide over code review. I want to maybe highlight a couple of the things where it, where it can sometimes not work so well. Uh, one of which is that um, it, you can have a pair that ends up, this, happens, this happened a lot in the Twisted project where I contribute, we'd be at a sprint, we'd pair with people at a sprint, we'd work on stuff, we'd make great code, and then um, a month later we realized it was completely wrong because we were caught in this great group think kind of cycle. But having a code review having from someone with a bit of distance from the implementation can often provide really valuable insight, so, which you can't get in pair programming for precisely the reasons that make pair programming quite good. The second thing is that sometimes pair programming can create, it can make it harder to kind of look for patterns in code reviews. So you, you doesn't generate artifacts about what we think works. So in some ways it's quite, it works because it's like, it's organic, you know, people are on a site, they're talking to each other and that's good, but it can mean that you don't, um, uh, it can mean basically if one person's being an asshole, that then um, you might not detect that. And or if yeah, anyway, I read a long. It, I had a really good piece I wrote about this. It's much better on writing. <laughs> uh, did we switch to pair programming versus code review question? When, uh, <laughs> the, the original question was how do you share the knowledge? So. I mean, I, I have something to add to it, but I just don't want to like kind of switch to different questions before we answer the, the previous one. Um, if it's about sharing knowledge by doing code reviews, then you can add this. Right. So I think it's important to understand that pair programming and code review is just like two kind of different tools and they achieve different, slightly different goals. So I think for pair programming, you have two person who know this particular piece of code very well, and they've written it, they could probably like figure out within seconds where the problem is and how it works and so on and so forth. But there is also something that we call readability, which means your code should be readable, which means basically any engineer who is somewhat familiar with the language should be able to figure out what this code does. And you know, when you have two persons, they may end up, they may, may end up with a brilliant code, but no, nobody else could understand this. And then, you know, one year later, these two persons, like one of them left company, another one moved to different office and now in completely different time zone. And somebody else, some poor soul sitting there and trying to figure out what this code does and they cannot understand because they didn't really thought about it. So I think this is one thing that re code reviews, especially if you send code review to somebody far enough, like outside of your team, I think this one tool that works great for making sure you produce maintainable code. Uh, it's maybe not code review is probably not so great at detecting like design problems because yes, when, when you send code to review, it's probably already too late to, to find the design mistakes. Um, so, so I kind of disagree slightly with, so I think code review is more valuable than pair programming. Um, I found that I could mentor a much larger team uh, <laughs> by working in that way and I could just like working one at a time with, uh, with, uh, with t members of the team. Um, but I think then there are other advantages like um, having, so having somebody outside a pair um, uh, get their eyeballs on the code is not just about sort of the readability of their, the, the product uh, in a way, you know, to new, to new eyeballs, but to, uh, so, you know, you get uh, to comment on the readability um, but you also get the knowledge building up around the team of the people who are doing the reviews as to what's going on, what are the new features going in, how's this, um, how is the project evolving and new things that they can, they can use. I also think that it's not impossible to catch like architectural, um, architectural problems at uh, code review time. Um, 
so when I'm, when I'm doing a review, I sort of go through it in several passes. And my first pass will usually be like sort of readability things. Um, because they just like stick out. It's like I don't really get, understand what's going on here. But then you knock it back a couple of times and uh, and cycle it, and then you're getting into sort of clearer code. It's clearer what the intention is, and then it's clearer what the um, the architectural problems might be. So I have successfully spotted sort of um, some significant security problems and architectural problems in code review, um, and and. Uh, Take them back. But if you'd been working with them, you'd have been able to discover those before they'd written what huge amounts of code. But the, the thing is, Daniel, yes, you, you can mentor more people by doing code reviews than the one person you could pair with at a time. But if you get your team pairing with each other, <laughs> you get them, you're able to mentor much more effectively than just you doing all the code reviews. Right, so I think Radek wants to add something. I think the most important thing about code reviews uh, is to uh, make them part of the part of the job, because uh, I often saw a situation when people was treating code review like something additional, not like uh, like it was the part of the of the development process, and in the results the code reviews were very shallow. Uh, so, yeah, I think the most imp I think the most important thing so that code reviews. Uh, uh, work is that uh, make make developers uh, aware that uh, they have to do code review and that it is uh, it is their uh, their their job to do them well because it won't have uh, because otherwise it will have some uh, very very bad uh, uh, results. Also, uh, my my project showed that a good notification system for code review is is essential. Also. Uh, so there sh is, this should be something that read, that the developers w will will really read, not uh, adding adding these notifications to systems that uh, developers already ignore. Uh, yeah. So mm, okay. So that's it. So I think this is a, an essential point, and this goes a, a bit back to the tooling. So we're getting back to the actual question that that was asked. But code review. Uh, along with anything that you want to add as part of your pro uh, processes, really only works if it's if it's part of the the process and understood as this is the standard workflow. If it's in any way thought of as a, as an optional extra, then it's just not going to happen. So so, so the rule we have is that um, um, code has to be signed off by at least one other core developer before it can be committed. And what what we actually have is. Um, with our GitHub project, only the um, the Juju bot is the only uh, is the the only one who can um, merge through GitHub. Uh, is the only one with commit rights through through GitHub, um, and um, th we have the, the review board has quite a nice UI. The dashboard will show you all of the current reviews, and um, it'll show you the the status. So it's only when it, it goes green that it's got to ship it from another developer that you're allowed to trigger the bot. To, to do the review, but it, it, yeah, it has to be seen as part of the, the standard process. And, and uh, a, a, alongside that, to avoid sort of shallow reviews, um, when code goes in, essentially the, the two people responsible for the code, we see it are the person who wrote the code, but also the person who approved it. So if there's a problem, if there's a substantial problem with the code, the, whoever reviewed it, whoever approved it, um, is just as responsible for those problems as the, as the person who wrote it, because they didn't spot the problem and they okayed it. So. Yeah, um, so we get more questions from the audience. Um, I'm not sure which, um, this one is closer from you, sorry. Hello, uh, yeah, my question is more about the human side of it. How do you motivate, encourage, and teach the members of the team who are doing the reviewing to make sure they give you reviews in a timely way? How do you teach them to improve the quality of the review? Like, how do you, how do you get the human side of the, the thing working? So, so I'll make a very quick comment before I pass it on. That we, uh, people who are new to the team, we start them off as, um, they are mentored reviewers. They're, they're okay and, uh, alone is not sufficient. To, to give a ship it, and we, we have a process of people 
the graduating as code reviewers and they, they will be mentored by another core developer through the review through their reviews will be checked and discussed and so that's how we handle that particular or part of how we handle that so you do code reviews reviews yes we review the code reviews indeed I, I'm not sure how interesting is this. Uh, I mean, it kind of happens naturally. So what usually happens to people who join Google, they join some team, they spend some time learning our technologies, and then sometime later they produce their first change list. And what usually happens, their first code review takes a lot of time. Uh, there is a lot of comments, both about style and some design issues, and you know, just sometimes, like sometimes people even new to the language because they use something else in outside of Google, and then when they join Google, they just it happened that they use different language. So usually, what happens first core review is very kind of long process. It usually takes several days. And then the next core reviews are easier and easier. And what usually happens that the person understands the value of code reviews. The person sees that as a result of code reviews, their code is better. And it's much easier even for them to work with their own code. So I think after, after a while, people just understand what's the value of code reviews, uh, that it's actually helpful them. So I don't think it's really a problem if you, like, if you do it right. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I think one of the things we have is just a, a list of, uh, we've had, I've had in past positions a list of uh, good practices and bad practices. Like just saying, reminding reviewers to be thankful for code is actually like a really nice thing or, avoiding the anti-pattern of, oh, and while you're there, could you just, you know, uh, letting things drag off. In terms of timeliness, um, there are some tricks, you, like some organizational tricks you can use, like Kanban, which kind of can help. Um, but uh, the, the, at least for me, the, 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 the trick there is to em emphasize empathy and the golden rule, do to others what you would have them do to you. No one likes waiting for code reviews. Uh, yeah. That, that, and I think if you encourage that attitude in your team more generally, you'll end up with a better team. Um, I'd also say that um, this is different in corporate environments than in open source. Projects that I work on in my spare time, I would love to review patches more quickly, but sometimes I don't have that time. And that's a difficult question, and I don't know how to answer that one. Um, yeah, actually, it's a good point. Um, I think all, all of you five are mostly working in, um, commercial environments and um, mostly proprietary stuff and a bit of open source. Open and open source, okay, so like almost half. So it's, it's, it, it's different in open source than uh, what you all say. Um, I, I also have small addition. I think it's very important to kind of look at what type of, like what language do you use? Like especially if you are not like, you, we usually do code reviews in English, and if your English is not native, just try to be careful, try to be kind of, attack a code, not a person. Do not do not say like, this is stupid, this is wrong, and you are a bad engineer. You, like if you say, you know, like if you, could this li if you could use this library, your life will be easier. <laughs> this is much better way to, of saying this than saying like, you should remove all of this. So just try to be very polite. It's extremely important, especially if you do code review for somebody who you don't interact face to face. Right, um, that, is, that is a big thing in its own, I think. Um, how do you talk, how do you, how do you write and kind of reviews? So um, either we can go into this or we can try to take another I, question. I have something to add to that, which is that um, I've you shouldn't, when you're reviewing somebody's code, be just saying, do it like this, because that's my preference. Uh, I, like, people should have the flexibility to develop in the way that they want to develop, um, uh, you know, according to, like, house style and that kind of thing. Um, but when you're reviewing, you should be saying, 
uh, have you considered doing it like this because of all of these benefits? And maybe they have, and maybe they, they will reply and say, yeah, well, that's not right because you haven't thought about this. And uh, engendering a discussion about why the code is, is good is uh, a useful product to the code review process. Something further to add. Uh, um, th one of the ways we ensure that code reviews get done in a timely way is we have a, a, a timetable of on-call reviewers just because you know, some people don't like doing it, and so you're, you're scheduled once every fortnight, I think it works out. There's a couple of people in different time zones who are the on-call reviewers and, and doing code reviews on when you're the on-call reviewer takes priority over, over whatever else you're doing, and, and, and that you know, can be a good organizational trick to, make, to ensure they happen. Right, does that answer the question? <laughs> Great. So we um, had another question from here, and okay, I, w I will um, add. I will add uh, quickly. I um, I can't sell you any uh, good idea for um, for teaching p uh, people how to code review. But what I saw in my in my project is that when a new person comes to team and he does his first code reviews, uh, he always sees things that other developers are used to, and uh, he always can't point out some problems that we already have some uh, workarounds and don't want to fix it, and he points it out and we, we, can, uh, we, can, uh, do, uh, we can fix it and, uh, and this way uh, improve, improve the project. How do you handle um, emergencies, like production emergencies? Um, um, you don't seem to be uh, web developers, but uh, it has happened to, um, that a bug has gone through the whole process, comes in production, and the client sees it, but is in the different time zone. So for him, it's like four in the m afternoon. Uh, to us, it's maybe two in the morning. Uh, so there is generally one person staying um, available, but if he pushes um, his correction, that probably won't be reviewed when it goes live. How do you handle that kind of case? Do you keep um, two people available? We have people working in all the major time zones, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you, that's, that's possibly a different kind of aspect of the operational life cycle. So if you release and there is a problem, do you have the capability to roll back? Um, that's one of the things that uh, Bank of America you know, absolutely requires, is that there is some back out strategy if everything goes wrong. Roll back, ask questions later. <laughs> yeah. um, also, this can be solved partly with tooling. So um, uh, Google's code review system has a way of forcing, um, saying, oh, this is really important, I'm gonna force it through, but then that get, gets flagged later. And so that, that's something that you, you have to get reviewed later and the ways of bubbling that up so that, you know, that, yeah. So yes, for, for very important stuff, there is a way to submit it without code review, but it's kind of not encouraged to do this. So if you can, like, you know, it's, it's not uncommon that your fix for a bug introduces some other bug, which is even more horrible than the original bug because he was very hurried. So I think it's actually very important to review these kind of fixes. In, uh, in, in my project, we have um, we are um, reviewing the stories after they are merged to master once again. So if then uh, something is broken, uh, the same person who worked on the story uh, is, uh, is is uh, is working to fix it. And after after the master is pushed on production and it's it's broken there, uh, there are. Uh, the people who do code review, I think, I don't, uh, are not called. Uh, just the just the team that the that uh, handles the integration is 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 deciding to, uh, either to uh, hotfix or revert it. Right. Um, I, I know there are more questions, but th there is a point I, I think is really really important that we like to um, focus on, which is how do you. Um, talk to the other person when you're reviewing 
how do you how do you say something is wrong? How do you um, how do you disagree? How, how do you say it exactly? Do you say um, I think that piece here is wrong and should be done this way, or mm, so uh, when I when I do code review and why. When 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 we do uh, code review in our team, we try to uh, suggest um, a better solution. And if it's a if it's a small piece of code, small function, we uh, suggest a new implementation or a skeleton of new implementation. Um, or just if 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 it's clear, if it's um, if it's a matter of using uh, like another library or or function that already exists, we just we just uh, suggest the, the name of the of the model of function. Yeah, so that's that's how it that how, that's how it goes. Uh, and and sometimes, of course, there's there's a situation where something is wrong, and I don't want I don't know how to fix it, or uh, maybe not that. Maybe I just don't have an uh, instant idea for a better uh, for a better solution. And in in that case, I just. Uh, I just uh, write that it's it's uh, that this this part is bad or it sh should be uh, rewritten and uh, and often go to that person and talk about uh, what was the idea behind the behind this implementation. Yeah, I think it was Jonathan who said that when reviewing, one of the most vital skills is is empathy, and I, I really with code review that's it, it, it's got to be that it's you know we've got to be able as adults we've got to be able to to disagree and discuss and you know, see things from other people's point of view. There's, there's no way around that. But just really to say that um, Canonical, where I work, it, it's, it's all remote work. Uh, we're a distributed team, distributed across countries. And the thing that makes such a difference when working with people and discussing things and having code reviews is having met in person. We do sprints uh, at least a couple of times a year. And once you've met a person and you, you've you know, had a meal with them and you, uh, you understand how they talk and you can almost hear their tone of voice when they type something on IRC, suddenly having discussions becomes so much dramatically easier. So um, yeah, it's very important to even with remote work, really, if you can, to meet up with people. Um, I don't think this is that difficult. I think you just be professional. Um, <laughs> uh, it's sometimes difficult. I had a, a review... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, that just like had me almost tearing my hair out. It's like you just don't understand the first thing about this application. I wrote like a kind of tetchy uh, review, and then I looked at it and I thought this is just unprofessional. And uh, I tried to roll it back so that it was guiding that person as to how that they they could get up to speed on how this this whole system works. Um, and I, I hopefully removed most of the tetchiness and might show you through a little bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I agree that it, you, you should be very careful when doing code reviews. I think like if you, you should be in the correct mindset when you do code reviews. If you are annoyed, like if you're angry, it's better to not to do it right now. It's better, you know, go have lunch, relax a bit, and then do a code review because otherwise you, like, you know, you work with people, you, like we all work with people despite what we are programmers and we are technical people. Interacting with humans is hard. And this might be actually the hardest part of our jobs. So just be careful. If you're not a native speaker, be especially careful. Uh, yes, talking to people in person helps a lot. Uh, if you cannot fly, have a video chat or just, you know, even phone call is much better than just email. Because, you know, some people just, you look at what they write and you would think, like, he's such a terrible person. But it's a, he's actually not, or he, he or she, sorry. Um, and on the other side, if you receive code review, it's important to assume best intentions. Like, you, whatever they say, no matter what the tone is, the intention is to improve your code. It's not to annoy you. So you should never, you, sh you should try to not uh, receive criticism as it applies to yourself. 
this is only criticism for your code, which is not the same as you. Yeah, um, I'd say that there are also just a couple of tricks, like you can uh, err on the side of asking questions, like why did you do it this way? Um, or, um, you know, what, uh, what led you to do this? Um, someone mentioned earlier, talking about the code rather than the person, so rather than saying you've missed this use case, you could say this function doesn't handle this use case, which does, you know, which does make it less personal. Um, and also to just uh, make, uh, be, report subjective facts, as in, I found this hard to understand at first, you know, perhaps doing this. Um, th those are all, all good things, I think, that you can do that can help. Um, yeah, and also be, be fast. Like, having a fast feedback loop actually covers a multitude of sins. Right. We don't have a lot of time for a lot more questions, so we're going to take that question over there. Thanks. Uh, so I was wondering uh, about adding the incentive uh, for making reviews, you know, um, have, has anyone tried uh, gamification or something like this, you know, coders uh, giving hearts or stars or whatever for the review or something like this, I don't know. Um, so Guido in a talk years ago said that you always do code reviews. Sometimes you get to do them before the patch lands other times you do it when you're reading someone else's code when you're trying to change it. <laughs> so in some ways, I haven't tried gamifying. The incentive is being able to maintain the code base that I work on. <laughs> Any more strong opinion? Um, yeah, so I didn't really comment on how, how timely our reviews are in, uh, in my current team, um, but um, uh, they haven't always been. It's, it's always been sort of a case of like nagging. Uh, one of the things that we have inside the project is we have uh, the, like a chat system, and there is a chat bot that means like this maintains this sort of internal uh, currency balance thing for every every person. And so, uh, by saying happy holiday to the bot on the day that uh, like it's a it's a holiday in some country in the world, uh, you get like ten quartz coins, and then you can like uh, do whatever you want with those. You can bribe you can use them to bribe uh, people however you want. Like maybe sort of say, there's, uh, there's some QQs up to, for grabs if you uh, uh, review my thing. Uh, these, these things have no intrinsic value, but people understand that, like, you know, they have a number there, and the number, bigger numbers are better, so they want to acquire these things. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, what I'm afraid about using uh, uh, gamifications for code review is that it will escalate qui uh, quickly, so people will just click, ah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, and uh, yeah, and after that you will, s you will say, oh, okay, so these people are, are just doing shallow code reviews, so let's maybe uh, have some harsh consequences if uh, code reviewed bro bro breaks production, and then people will be talking, oh, it was not a bug introduced in this code review, it was introduced by someone else, and that's will, that will just get worse and worse, worse and worse. So I, I, I don't say no, but you, you need to be careful and know, know the people in team uh, to be sure it won't, be, it won't uh, uh, escalate like this. Right, we, we had a question at the front, same. Uh, hi. Um, a few of you touched on the point that um, a code review is, is, is a bit late for sort of architectural um, and, and, um, and design uh, reviews. Do you have any other process uh, in place that happens earlier uh, in the flow? Uh, well, I always think uh, it's worth having a conversation as soon as you pick up a story, uh, pick up a card off the Kanban or whatever, um, to say, like, what is the expectation for this? Um, it's, you know, some, sometimes you're like really eager to get in and that conversation gets missed and that's, that's most likely the cause of, of the problems. But then for, for sort of larger pieces of work, I found it very useful to do CRC cards, which is um, class responsibility collaboration. It's like a Java technique. Um, and uh, in Java, all of those cards, so this is a, a, a technique where you uh, write down, uh, you do like a sort of, a uh, small piece of upfront design. So it's like, uh, uh, this works in an agile process. You just sort of um, get some thoughts on the table for how a, an architecture will be 
uh, laid out just um, using the layout of cards and the, the information that you put on them. And you iterate over that, you can tear up cards, move them around until the sort of the, the, the pattern is clear. And uh, uh, then uh, that can give you, that might not be per story, that might be sort of per epic or whatever. Um, so it gives you sort of a, a map of how that epic is going to, to, um, to work. And it doesn't take very long, it takes maybe sort of an hour or a couple of hours for a few months' work, maybe, or a month's work. Um, and it should then be very clear how uh, you, can, you should be able to pick up any of those cards off the table and uh, sort of go straight to an implementation because you know what the responsibility is of that uh, component that could be like a, a function or a, a module or a class in Python. Uh, or you know any any of the ways of, of defining structure in Python, um, but then you can just sort of you should be able to say well this is going to collaborate all these things I need to create mock versions of all of those things um, and just you be able to write the test suite almost sort of straight off. Um, um, ask me more about that if you if you're interested. Well, a strong opinion, a, a quick opinion from uh, Radek, and then uh, okay. we'd have to. Okay. okay, so uh, in the beginning of our project, we were encouraged to uh, post uh, pull requests with code, even if it was working, if it was still in progress, so that people can review the early versions of solutions. And this really worked because, uh, for example, when you pushed your code after one day, it, it wasn't so hard to uh, rewrite the, the architecture. Uh, because uh, because it wasn't too too uh, too much work, and uh, uh, the other mm, the other idea is that uh, new new people in the team offer, uh, often are, are working uh, in pairs with with someone uh, experienced, or if you are going to do something in a part of code that someone else is. Uh, specialized and did did much there. You can just ask him if this this solution is uh, you are going to implement is okay, and uh, it's uh, it's working. It's um, um, if it's alpha sentence only, uh, two sentences is too much. So we do something called design reviews, which means you write a document which is called design document and then you send it to somebody to comment on it and to verify that your idea is correct. And this document usually does not contain any code. This is just kind of a system diagram, which kind of try, helps to catch like bigger design problems. Right, um, we really have to go, so thank you all the speakers. And um, yeah, let's go for the next talk then.